addition to the actual review, number 16, number 17, identify the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Now notice for the horizontal asymptotes, you got these rules. I'll do that second. The vertical asymptotes, you are wondering what can't x equal. And to do that, we got to remember that it's okay to have a zero in the top, but no zeros in the bottom. That's the rule for vertical asymptotes. So for vertical asymptotes, we are going to concentrate on the denominators only. And I'm going to take care of all three of these. So this is 2x minus 1, 2x plus 1, because that's a difference of two squares. Now if I set each one of these equal to zero, 2x minus, 1 equal, 2x minus 1 equals 0, and 2x plus 1 equals 0, and solve it, add 1, add 1, I get 2x is 1, divide by 2, I get x is a half, but that's what x can't be. Same thing over here, subtract 1, so I get 2x is negative 1, divide by 2, divide by 2, x can't be negative 1 half, because if I plug that in right here, I'd get a 0, if I plug this one in right here, I'd get a 0. So this is my domain. This is what x can't be. This one is a god of one trinomial. So x and x, two factors of negative 27 after negative 6 are negative 9 and 3. So from there I can just look at it. x can't equal 9 or negative 3. And there's my uh, vertical these are this is what X can't be so I, I guess I misspoke up here a little earlier they want the asymptotes so the asymptotes if we were to graph this we would find they'd be X equals one half and X equals negative one half so I was talking domain but that's what helps us find the actual asymptotes so this would be my answer this would be my answer so back to this it's not X doesn't equal that's my domain that's what X can't equal so that on our graph we would get X equals 9 for a vertical asymptote and we would get X equals negative 3 so I got to correct that a little bit they want the equations of the asymptotes and again you can always type this in decimals type this in decimals and you will see that the graph doesn't cross these vertical asymptotes so kind of interesting Last one I made super easy. We know that x cannot equal 2. Therefore, our vertical asymptote is x equals 2. All right, now let's go into rules. Rules for horizontal asymptotes. So if we look at horizontal asymptotes, what we have to do is wonder about these things here. So it says the top degree less than the bottom degree. Let's go on the hunt for that. The top degree is less than the bottom degree. So 1 goes with B. How do I know that? There's an invisible 1 right there on X. That's all I'm worried about. And there's a 2 there. So the top degree, the highest degree in the top, is less than the highest degree in the bottom. Therefore, for number, for letter B, our, y, our horizontal asymptote would be Y equals 0. Now let's go on the hunt for this. Where does the top degree equal the bottom degree? Well, we have that in letter A. Let's take a look at it. So the top degree is equal to the bottom degree, and if that's the case, it says we got to reduce stuff, basically, in this. So really, we're taking a look at 3x squared over 4x squared. We should know that these just cancel. So my, my horizontal asymptote for letter A would be Y equals 3 fourths. Again, check out decimals. Confirm your findings. But this is what you're supposed to be doing during your test using these rules. Last one, where does the top degree, where is it greater than the bottom degree? Well, we look at letter C. The top degree, which is a 3, is bigger than that 1. That means there, there is no horizontal asymptote. So there's number 16. Number 17, a little weird here, but it says use long division to rewrite the function. Now, after doing a whole bunch of these, I hope you guys know this is a problem designed to get you back to your understanding of this parent function. So let's go to this. 
and this the instructions are just trying to help you understand you're trying to relate this to this so use long division it's like okay so that goes in to that we start with this what times this gives us this four but don't forget you gotta multiply by everything so I get 4x minus 12 another don't forget don't forget to subtract all of it this minus itself gone that negative hits that negative a lot of students forget that little move and it's a 12 that means that's my remainder, so if I rewrote it, I'd go and my remainder over my divisor. Now what I did when I was teaching this is I told you guys to just rearrange it. You don't have to, but my brain likes it this way, because now I can see what's going on. It says sketch and graph and find the asymptotes. Well, first of all, we got to know what the parent function is, and it's right there. So remember, 1, 1 is our go-to point, negative 1, negative 1 is our also our other go-to point. And now, right now I'm just doing the parent function. And then, after using long division, we can now look at this and go, aha, we're going to go right 3 and up 4. Well, that means everything. So I'm going to consider this the center, and these are my asymptotes. There's x equals 0, there's y equals 0. Everything moves right 3 up 4. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's my, my new y-axis. And there's my new x-axis. And right now, I'm going to use a, uh, well, I'll use a black marker and use dotted. So that would be here, dotted, 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 dotted. And then this point would actually move, I know I went a little bit berserk over there, but it moved right here. Now if you were listening to, in class, this is your vertical stretch by 12. And this is a very strange thing, but it takes that point and it moves it in here a bit. Now I know that's quite vague. But, we're kind of just getting the idea of what a vertical stretch would do. And, again, if you wanted to be super careful what this exactly looks like, you got two options. You can go to Desmos, or you can actually plug numbers in. You could plug in, you know, like X is 3, X is 4, X is 5 into here, and just see what it ends up spitting out, and you'll get an idea of how accurate we were. So well, that's it, you guys. Um, good luck on your test. Uh, reach out to me if you have any questions.